Hello, my name is Peter Martins. Thank you for watching this video. I made it so that I could tell people about my father, Hans Martins, who passed away at 94 years old due to complications from a stroke in September of 2023. He was our Silver Rail Club's senior engineer, and this is his story. Hans Heinrich Martins was born on January 6, 1929, in Einfeld, Germany. His father would always call him Hans Heiner, and as a young boy his days were filled with schoolwork and chores as he grew up with his sister on his parents' farm in Schleswig-Holstein, just outside of Neumünster, Germany. They grew a variety of vegetables and tobacco, and also kept honeybees. Dad's father was a master beekeeper and taught Hans everything he knew about the process. He really enjoyed taking honey off, and the local sale of it provided an extra income to the family. That's my dad to the right in this painting, and his dad in the background. Years later, on our farm in Virginia, Dad finally got to set up his own hives and teach us how to take off and extract honey for our family to enjoy. He also brought honey to friends and neighbors around us, and took some to sell at his workplace on job sites that GE would send him to. Of course, Hans had to get to America first, before working for GE could even be realized. Fortunately, when the German war machine began to organize itself in the early 1930s, Hans was still far too young to be considered for the party. He continued his schooling and went on to attend college in Poland. When the war came to an end in 1945, he was still only 16 years old. During the years that followed, Hans found work for a moving company that helped people relocate to new places being rebuilt around his hometown and around the city of Neumünster. It always afforded him steady work, but he had a bigger goal in mind. Hans immigrated into America in 1954 after securing a work visa which allowed him to enter into the United States. He lived with his sponsor family in upstate New York and worked on their dairy farm for several years. After fulfilling his obligations to them, Hans went to work for Middle Village Ironworks before leaving the upstate area and moving to New York City. He had secured a position with a larger company which installed ductwork for heating and air conditioning systems being installed into the growing number of high-rise apartments and office buildings in Manhattan. It wouldn't even be a year later that his life would really change when he met the woman who would be forever special to him, our mom. The two met at a dance in New Jersey and after courting for about a year, they were married and moved into an apartment in Glendale, Queens. It was an interesting arrangement, as Hans agreed to share the apartment with his new mother-in-law. That didn't always give the newlyweds time to themselves. Still, after a little less than two years later, I was born in May of 1960. Hans took on extra work, side jobs, and it wasn't too long before his mechanical skills got him noticed. After helping a mechanic repair a box truck that had broken down on the side of the road, he was recommended by that person to a position with Cummings Diesel and was hired on shortly thereafter. Our family grew during the 1960s with my brother Edward being born in November of 1965. This was an exciting time for all of us, and my brother and I have great memories of visiting family, friends, and neighbors, and so many of the wonderful things that we did together while growing up in Throgs Neck, New York, in the Bronx. Dad continued to work for Cummings, but was now working more out of the shop and making over-the-road service calls. One client that called on them was General Electric. There was a particular diesel engine that they were using to start their gas turbine generators, and they called in to have it serviced. Dad got the work order and went out to make the call. He arrived at the job site, noted what was wrong, made the repairs, and recommended some upgrades for improvement. The improvements were a success, and GE wound up calling for Hans quite often after that. Eventually, they convinced Dad that he should just come to work for them, offering him a field service position. Now Hans began a new career, as he learned how to troubleshoot and repair steam and gas turbines for power plants in the New York area. With continued training, he received as many certificates in both power generation and management. In 1974, Hans accepted a field service position at GE's Richmond office and later moved our family to Virginia in January of 1975. He continued his good work for GE and later received certification on gas, steam, and even nuclear power generation. Hans retired in 1992, but continued on as a part-time consultant to GE for an additional five years. 
Dad was always focused on our family and in wanting to give us a better life. He had a genuine way of connecting with everyone around him and could easily draw people in with the amazing stories that he would share with them. Dad was also an avid model railroader and he would set up his HO or N-Gage display for families and the general public to enjoy during the many model train shows and rail events we would attend. To those many people we met, he was well known as our Silver Rail Club's senior engineer. Dad would spend a great deal of time with me before each rail event to help design a new track plan that would be unique and memorable to each show and of course be a lot of fun for people to watch and operate. Together we came up with what we called the Big Wow, a creative way to place a 90 degree crossover between two ovals, one smaller than the other. By coupling together just the right amount of freight cars, of just the right size, thereby making the train just the right length, it would be set up so that the locomotive would narrowly miss hitting its caboose when coming out of the smaller loop. This was a thrill for kids and adults to watch over and over again, especially during high-speed operation. All right, everybody watch, because we're going to try it again. Let's see, maybe we can go a little faster. Get close. Are they going to make it? I don't know. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Are they make it? Oh, yeah. You know you're so fast at it. I know. Dad, my dad says if we go faster, it's closer. Wide open right there. Oh. Okay, we'll go one more time. Everybody crowd right in front of the camera. We'll get everybody right in. Dad enjoyed spending time with people, but he had other interests and activities which he enjoyed as well, such as farming, tending to his animals, such as the goats and the sheep, and also he was an avid photographer. Working with both film and the digital format, he could take some really great pictures. He owned a variety of cameras and movie cameras. At a time when making home movies was a thing, Dad was king. In the mid-60s, he even had a couple of Polaroid cameras but he said that the pictures could never compare with his more expensive film cameras. Later, his photography work was a direct inspiration for my brother Edward to pursue that same passion and follow a career path in the field of photography with the U.S. Navy. He joined and became a photographer's mate and completed his tour, a combat camera veteran. I can truly say that my brother has nearly seen it all and photographed it too. Through the years, though, it was model railroading, the world's greatest hobby, that held Dad's interest the most. And when he wasn't spending time with his model trains, he had another way to relax and unwind. If he noticed that his lawn was getting too tall, he would climb aboard his zero turn, turn the key, and then spend the day in the sunshine, taking in the fresh country air while mowing around his property. He really appreciated the time spent outside on the farm and zipped back and forth until every blade of grass was neatly trimmed. I often complimented him and told him Father mows best, and even gave him a Father's Day card that stated the same thing. I know it was a play on words, giving a nod to the old TV series Father Knows Best, but I guess in this case, both were true. Dad even had solar panels installed on his property. Whenever he'd get his electric bill, he often joked about how he was making money on the whole deal. Here he is standing in front of the house we called home for so many years. Hey there, Dad. Over here. Know that we love you. And we always will. You showed everyone all the many things that can be accomplished in one's lifetime.
and you did so while never losing sight of the American dream. You chased after it and made it yours. Along the way, you taught us about the things that matter most in life, faith, family, fellowship, and friendship, plus the importance of all the lessons one learns while living. In the end, God blessed you with everything you desired. Unselfishly, you did great things for your family and for so many people through whom you'll be well remembered. Now you can rest. Okay. 